Greetings once again in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Uh, now, our topic for today says that the six secrets of things that happen to you when you pray. Right? You might be wondering, so what happens to me when I pray? And we're going to in unpack all of these um, answers and questions in this episode. So you sit back and relax and uh, pray that God speaks to you in a special way. Now, for the first point, you might be asking yourself, so why do I need to pray? What, what's the purpose of me praying? I can just go on about my life and not even worry about God. Why do I even have to pray? And we can take our Bibles and we can go to um, Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 12 and 13, which tells us that um, then you will come upon me and come and pray to me and I will listen to you. You will seek me and find me and when you seek me with all your heart, right? It says that when we seek God with all our heart, then we will find him. So basically prayer here, they're telling us that it is basically a conversation with God. Or it's rather a means for us to get close to God. Because it says that when you seek me, not just seeking me, but when you seek me with all your heart. So that is the key point that you must focus on. Seek God with all your heart. And then the Bible says that, and then you will find me. This is what the Bible says. It's not what I'm saying, but this is what the Bible says in Jeremiah, right? So what we should do is that we should seek God with all our hearts. And then the Bible assures us that for sure we will find him. Now we are then assured in the Bible when you go to John 14 verse 14, it tells us that when we ask anything in his name, we shall receive it right when we ask anything in my name i will do it that's what john 14 verse 14 says right so this then assures us that if we ask for anything through prayer right we're still determining why should we pray right and the bible here is telling us that if we ask anything of our heart's desire it says that here in the bible that then god will hear us and he will give us what it is that we are asking for so what are these six secrets that um happen to you when you pray and we're going to go into it now point number one says that it gets us close to god right it keeps us close to christ that's point number one and you can find the answer in john chapter 15 verse 7 which says that if you remain in me and my words in you then i will then uh, whatever you ask for and wish for, it will be given unto you. Now, in the King James Version, it says that if you abide in me and my words abide in you as well. It says that then whatever you ask for, according to uh, the will of God, it shall be given unto you. Right. So this is the message that you are getting. It says that if we abide in Christ. Now, it's saying that uh, uh, when we when we read the Bible here in John, John chapter John chapter 15, God is telling us that if we abide in him, he says that then his words will abide in us. Now, which which ones are God's words? Um, God's words come from the Bible. This is the only way you will know what God says and what God encompasses for your life. God says that if we abide in him, then his words will also by, by reading the Bible, by understanding what the Bible says, we will then know what God's words are for us pertaining our lives, right? So when someone says something that is offside or something that does not align with the words of God that are written in the Bible, then you can be able to tell and say, no, this does not align with what God said. And you can be able to discern um, that spirit, right? But in this moment, the Bible is telling us that if we abide in Christ. His words will also abide in us. So to the point that whatever we ask for, it shall be given unto us and we shall receive it. Now, so that's point number one. It keeps us close to Christ. Another point, the secret number two, it says that um, prayer makes us to trust God right prayer makes us to trust god now if we go to matthew chapter 21 verse 22 it says that if we believe we will receive anything that we ask for in prayer if we believe that's the key points that we should focus on if we believe so you can ask anything in the prayer right and not believe the bible says that you will not get what you're asking for but the main point is if you believe you cannot just pray and not believe in things that you're asking for right you must you you must exercise your faith whatever you are asking for 
make sure that you are believing perhaps to the point that uh some things that you are asking for it's because you don't believe you know you don't believe that god can actually do those things so therefore those prayers are not answers because it says that here in the bible that if you believe not if someone believes for you but if you believe then this shall be answered this is what the bible says in matthew chapter 21 verse 22 we should learn to exercise our faith don't exercise someone else's faith but exercise the faith that you have right and then the bible tells us if you believe that's the point if you believe so let us make sure that when we pray let us pray with the conviction let us pray believing that god can certainly come through for us right and then point number three is that it says that it allows us to surrender to god when we pray it allows us to surrender to god now you know when you're praying you are basically admitting that um these things that i'm praying for are basically out of my hand so i need um divine power to help me to overcome whatever it is that you're facing in life right so this is what prayer does it helps us right to 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 surrender to what god's will for our life is now you might be asking yourself so what is god's will for my life i cannot tell you what god's will for your life is but it is god himself that can tell you what his will for your life is but one thing i know for sure he says that his plans are not to destroy you his plans are not to harm you but it is to give you an expected end so if you are um, confused and you don't know what god's will for your life is Go to him, ask him in prayer and supplication and ask him, God, what is your will for my life? And he will reveal it unto you. Now, uh, point number four that we have, it says that it allows us to, to exercise patience. Prayer allows us to exercise patience, right? You might not be a patient person, but it says that prayer allows us to exercise patience, and we can go here uh, to Psalms chapter 40, verse 1. David then says that I waited patiently for the Lord and he turned, he turned to me and heard my cry. And if you read further, it talks about how he removed him from the mighty clay and it goes on and on and on like that. Right. This is what prayer does. It helps us to exercise patience. You know, when you pray for certain things, there are certain things that you pray for. And God answers them immediately, just like the children of Israel. When they prayed um, and they, when they needed manna, God provided manna for them in the wilderness the same time they asked for it. He did not say, okay, you guys will get manna when you get to Canaan. He did not do that. When they needed water, when they came to the point where they had bitter water as well, God turned that bitter water into water that was drinkable when they didn't have water to drink water came out from the rock these were instant things that were happening but there were certain things that were happening that god said for me to give you the promised land i cannot give you the promised land in the wilderness but the wood are the promised land is going to come in canaan so there are certain things that you have to exercise patience on when you pray to god god answers our prayers guys you have to believe remember you have to believe and you have to be sure that god will certainly come through for you right and that is our point our point number four it says that it helps us to exercise patience when you pray you believe that certainly god will not uh will, will not disappoint you and he will come through for you now point number five it says that when we pray we should not hang on to any sin right when you pray don't pray with the heart that says ah but god i cannot let go of of this certain sin you know it's just too heavy for me or it's too nice and i cannot let it go bible tells us here that um if you go to psalm chapter 66 verse 18 it says that if i had cherished sin in my heart the lord would not have listened if you cherish sin in your heart the lord will not listen to your prayer. This is what the Bible tells us, guys. This is not something that I'm forming from my own head. We just read the scripture in Psalm chapter 66, verse 18. If you cherish sin in your heart, the Lord will not hear your prayer. So there are certain sins that you are holding on to. And we are saying, God, I cannot let go of this one. And God is saying, he will not hear your prayer because there's a certain sin that you are cherishing in your heart that you do not want to let go of off right and also if we look for an another verse it says that in proverbs chapter 28 verse 9 it says that if anyone turns a deaf ear to the law even his pr prayers are detestable 
if anyone turns a deaf ear to the law, not the law of the government, but the law of God. Now, how do we know the law of God? The law of God is found in the Ten Commandments. Those are the law. That is the law of God, actually. The Ten Commandments is the law of God, not the law of the government, but the law of God, which is the Ten Commandments commandments now the bible tells us that if someone turns a deaf ear to the ten commandments then his prayers are detestable before god so this is something that we should look forward to we should look out for as well that we should not turn a deaf ear unto the commandments of god right and also james chapter 4 verse 3 it says that when you ask you do not receive because you ask with wrong motives that you may spend on your own pleasures when you ask you ask with wrong motives what are those things you know sometimes you pray like no i want to show them that uh i'm now going up in life you want to show them lord bless me so that i can shine in front of my enemies now the bible tells us here that when you ask with the wrong motive with selfish um selfish ambitions because you want people to see you bible tells us that god will not answer such prayers because those are selfish prayers this is says in james chapter 4 verse 3 that when we ask with selfish ambitions when we ask with our wrong motives the bible tells us that god is not going to answer those prayers right so this is something that we should all keep in mind remember do not pray with selfish motives but rather pray aligning yourself with the will of God. Now, in closing, we can go then, um, prayer allows us to also persist in prayer. If you go to 1 Thessalonians 5, verse 16 to 18, it says that rejoice evermore. In all things, pray without ceasing, right? Pray without ceasing. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. Why? Because this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning your life. This is the will of God. God wants us to pray forevermore. He wants us to pray and be closer to him. Remember, we said that prayer brings us closer to God. So by praying, you become closer to God and you become, this is what God wants us. He wants us closer to him. That's why he says that, and I will build a sanctuary with my people and he shall dwell amongst us. So God always wanted this connection with us. So this is the will of God. Pray without ceasing. Whatever it is that you are asking for God, pray without ceasing. And in all things, in everything, give thanks for this is the will of God concerning your life. And I like this part. It says that in all things in all things give thanks for this is the will of god concerning your life in all things not in some things whether in good or bad in all things give thanks unto the lord for this is the will of god whether things are good give thanks whether things are bad give thanks when things are falling apart give thanks for this is the will of god Right? So this is the message I just want to leave with you today. Remember, prayer keeps us closer to God. Prayer allows us to exercise patience. Prayer also allows us to surrender all to God because we admit that we do not have the power to conquer sin. Prayer also allows us to get rid of sin and not cherish sin in our heart. And also prayer allows us to persist in prayer and to seek the face of God. May God bless you. Thank mm -hmm. you.